Welcome to Adventures in Math. In today's adventure, we explore the physical origins of pi. We will see that pi emerges naturally from oscillatory motion and that circles are a consequence of pi rather than the cause. First, let's turn our attention to springs. When we stretch a spring beyond its natural resting length, it tends to pull back. And the more we pull, the more it tends to pull back, trying to restore its normal length. This restoring force can be written as F equals minus k times x. Here, k represents the stiffness of the spring, and x is how far we've stretched it past its resting length. We can see the force is negative when x is positive, which pulls it back towards its resting position. Let's imagine attaching a mass to the end of the spring, displacing it from rest, and then letting go to watch it move back and forth. In this illustration, the resting length of the spring is zero, and we represent the mass with a blue box we can see it moving smoothly back and forth. Now, let's make a few simplifying choices. We'll assume that the mass is exactly one and that k is equal to one. Since force is equal to mass times acceleration, we can rewrite our spring equation as x double prime equals minus x. Here, x double prime is the acceleration of the mass, or in other words, the second derivative of the position of the mass. We can rearrange the equation to get x double prime plus x equals zero. Now we have an ordinary differential equation in x since it relates x to its second derivative x double prime. To solve this equation, we need to choose the initial conditions for position, or x, and velocity, or x prime, the first derivative of position. Let's keep things simple, choosing the starting position to be zero and the initial of velocity to be one. Let's watch the motion unfold paying special attention to the time passed, which is denoted with t. The precise moment that we first return to zero is exactly equal to pi. For the simplest initial conditions, pi emerges as the heartbeat of harmonic motion, which explains why pi is found all throughout mathematics and physics in contexts that have little to do with circles, but much to do with oscillation. Rather than thinking of pi as the circle constant emerging from geometry, we can think of pi as the fundamental period of oscillatory motion, which we will see induces the geometry of ellipses and circles. So far, we've chosen k, or the stiffness of the spring, to be 1. Could we find a value of k that lets us choose when we first cross 0? A different value for pi? Let's define pi hat as the first positive time where the mass crosses 0. Now we have the more general boundary value problem, x double prime plus k times x equals zero, where the initial position is zero, the initial velocity is one, and the first positive zero crossing is at pi hat. Differential equations of this form are well studied, and we know that for k greater than zero, the solution must have the form x of t equal to a times cosine of omega t plus b times sine of omega t where omega is equal to square root of k. Let's use the initial conditions to solve for a and b. First, we find that a is equal to zero and that b is equal to one over omega. Then we find that x of t is equal to one over omega times sine of omega t. Finally, we apply the constraint that pi hat is the first positive zero crossing of x. We find that omega is equal to pi divided by pi hat, and we can plug this in to get the solution pi hat divided by pi times sine of pi over pi hat times t. Now that we found a version of sine that works with pi hat, let's find an equivalent form for cosine. We can change our initial conditions so that the position starts at one and velocity starts at zero, and then enforce that our first zero crossing happens at pi hat over two. Applying the same process as before, we can find the solution cosine pi over pi hat times t. We can define a parametric curve using these two solutions. When we set pi hat equal to exactly pi, this will simplify to cosine of t sine of t, which is the familiar unit circle in standard Euclidean geometry. Now we can try setting pi hat to other values to see what effect it has on the unit circle. In this illustration, we can see that as we deviate from the typical value of pi, the unit circle warps into an ellipse. This isn't a trick. When we redefine pi this way, we implicitly induce a non-Euclidean geometry. To see this clearly, 
Let's look at another standard way to define the unit circle using geometry. x squared plus y squared equals 1. This definition states that all points x, y that are a distance of exactly 1 from 0, 0 make up the unit circle. However, this definition implicitly uses the Euclidean metric as the distance. We can make this more general using something called a Malholonobis distance to see how pi hat fits in. When we choose a value of pi hat that is not equal to pi, we get an equation of an ellipse when we plug in our Malholonobis metric. Choosing pi hat to be another value than pi can be interpreted as rescaling the fundamental period of oscillation. The consequence of this rescaling is that our geometry becomes non-Euclidean. In today's adventure, we saw that pi naturally emerges from oscillation. We also saw that we can choose the value of pi to be what we like with the consequence that our geometry becomes warped or non-Euclidean. Pi is not about circles, but rather about rhythm through time and the symmetry of Euclidean space. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.